Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to the live reading, live studios of live readings of Srimad Bhagavatam here in Radha Lane. It's a real address and you can send your cards and letters over here if you want. Uh, right next to Shishi Radha Nila Madhava Temple, Iskon of Houston. We've just uh, finished some wonderful days of festivals and uh, initiations and Vyasa Pujas and it's uh, been a wonderful uh, experience for all of us. We have guests here in the room with us visiting. Welcome to you. <clears throat> all right, we've reached the fourth chapter. Uh, Shukadeva Goswami is well into uh, answering uh, Prikshit Maharaj's questions, the initial questions that form the basis of the rest of the Bhagavatam. Uh, but before we do go on, we're going to read the beautiful and profound glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam by Srila Sanatana Goswami, <coughs> the original and, uh, well, senior, let's say, disciple of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It goes like this. Sarva Shastavdipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokai Kadrik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kalidvan Ditya Shri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Shri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varchaksharaya Te Sarvada Sevasevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Mareka bando matsangin madguroman mahadana mannishtaraga madbhagya madananda namostute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadu tadayin atini chochata kara hanamun chagadachin mam prem narit kantayospura O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. All right, we've reached the fourth chapter, the process of creation very, very important, and it's interesting that when Maharaj Prichit started inquiring, uh, one of the first questions he asked was to explain how it is that Krishna creates this material world and enters into it and maintains it, um, which is very important for us to know and understand and assimilate before we can understand who Krishna is when we get to the tenth canto. It repeats in the first, in the second, in the third cantos, each time a little bit more um, detailed. Okay, Chukade Goswami is about to launch into this um, explanation. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the all auspicious Lord Sri Krishna, about whom glorification, remembrance, audience, prayers, hearing, and worship can at once cleanse the effects of all sins of the performer. 
purport. The sublime form of religious performances to free oneself from all reactions of sins. What? Oh, I'm on 15. Oh, that's because I went backwards. That's right. Sorry. I went, to, I went back to get a quote to put into my file that I'm using for t- next year's offering. Yes. Thank you. Part three. Sorry. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the all-auspicious Lord Sri Krishna again and again because the great learned sages, the great performers of charity, the great workers of distinction, the great philosophers and mystics, the great chanters of the Vedic hymns and the great followers of Vedic principles cannot achieve any fruitful result without dedication of such great qualities to the service of the Lord. Purport. Advancement of learning, a charitable disposition, political, social, and religious leadership of human society, philosophical speculations, the practice of the yoga system, expertise in the Vedic rituals, and all similar high qualities in in man serve serve one in the attainment of perfection only when they are employed in the service of the Lord. Without such dovetailing, all such qualities become sources of trouble for people in general. Everything can be utilized either for one's own sense gratification or in the service of one other than oneself. There are two kinds of self-interest also, namely personal selfishness and extended selfishness. But there is no qualitative difference between personal and extended selfishness. Theft for personal interest or for the family interest is of the same quality, namely criminal. (coughs) A thief pleading not guilty because of committing theft not for personal interest but for the interest of society or country has never been excused by the established law of any country. People in general have no knowledge that the self-interest of a living being attains perfection only when such an interest coincides with the interest of the Lord. For example, what is the interest of maintaining body and soul together? One earns money for maintenance of the body, personal or social, but unless there is God consciousness, unless the body is being properly maintained to realize one's relation with God, all good efforts to maintain body and soul together are similar to the attempts of the animals to maintain body and soul together. The purpose of maintaining the human body is different from that of the animals. Similarly, advancement of learning, economic development, philosophical research, study of the Vedic literature, or even the execution of pious activities like charity, opening of hospitals, and the distribution of food grains should be done in relation with the Lord. The aim of all such acts and endeavors must be the pleasure of the Lord and not the satisfaction of any other identity, individual or collective, sangsidir, haritoshanam. The same principle is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 9.27 where it is said that wherever we may Whatever we may give in charity and whatever we may observe in austerity must be given over to the Lord or be done on his account only. The expert leaders of a godless human civilization cannot bring about a fruitful result in any of their different attempts at educational advancement or economic development unless they are, unless they are God conscious. And to become God conscious one has to hear about the all-auspicious Lord as he is described in literatures like the Bhagavad Gita and Shrimad Bhagavatam. Note that one again. That's from the next year's file. I'll repeat it just in case you didn't get it the first time. And to become God conscious, one has to hear about the all-auspicious Lord as he is described in literature like the Bhagavad Gita and Shrimad Bhagavatam. Text 18. This is a very famous verse. 
Girata Hunandra, Pulinda Polkashar, Abhira Shumba, Javana Kusadaya, Yenye Chapapa, Yadapashraya Shraya, Shudyanti Tasmai, Prabhavishna Mena Maha. Kiratas, Hunas, Pulindas, Pulkashas. Give him this, no, you, give him this chair. Come over here, sit in the king's chair. Because this chair is the only chair that he'll feel comfortable in. Haribo, Haribo Sarva. Yeah, just see, you finally made it. <laughs> Senior man, you deserve it. Sure. Hare Krishna. I only got one more chair to get to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here. I don't want that chair. <laughs> For sure. I, I didn't yeah. think you would. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Kirat, kiratas, Hunas, Andras, Pulindas, Pulkishas, Abhiras, Shumbas, Yavanas, members of the Kasa races, and even, and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord due to his being the supreme power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Purport. Now we're going to hear about these different personalities. Kirata, a province of old Bharatavarsha mentioned in the Bhishpa Purva, uh, Parva of the Mahabharata. Generally the Kiratas are known as the aboriginal tribes of India and in modern days, the Santal Parganas in Bihar and Chota Nagpur might comprise the old province named Kirata. Huna, the area of East Germany and part of Russia, is known as the province of the Hunas. Accordingly, sometimes a kind of hill tribe is known as the Hunas. Andra. Hungary, Hungary, the Hunas came and, and started Hungary. Andhra, a province, a province in southern India, mentioned in the Bhishma Parva of the Mahabharata. It is still extant under the same name, Andhra Pradesh. Pulinda, it is mentioned in the Mahabharata, Sabha Parva, twenty six ten. That is, the inhabitants of the province of the name Pulinda. This country was conquered by Bhimasena and Sahadeva. The Greeks are known as the Pulindas. And it is mentioned in the Vanaparva of the Mahabharata that the non-Vedic race of this part of the world would rule over the world. This Pulinda province was also one of the provinces of Bharat <coughs> and the inhabitants were classified amongst the Chatriya kings. But later on, due to their giving up the Brahminical culture, they were mentioned as mlechas, just as those who are not followers of the Islamic culture are called kafirs, and those not, who, who are not followers of the Christian culture are called heathens. Abira. This name also appears in the Mahabharata, both in the Sabha Parva and Bhishma Parva. It is mentioned that this province was situated on the river Saraswati in Sindh, the modern, the modern Sindh province formerly extended to the other side of the Arabian Sea and all the inhabitants of that province were known as the Abiras. They were under the domination of Mara Yudhishthir and according to the statements of Markandeya, the Mlechas of this part of the world would also rule over Bharat. Later on this proved to be true as in the case of the Palindas. On behalf of the Palindas, Alexander the Great conquered India, and on behalf of the Abhiras, <coughs> Mohammed Ghori conquered India. These Abhiras were also formerly Chatriyas within the Brahminical culture, but they gave up the connection. The Chatriyas who were afraid of Par Parasharam and had hidden themselves in the Caucasian hilly regions later on became known as the Abhiras, and the place they inhabited was known as Abhiradesh. It's interesting because, you know, this is, in his, in his, in his, this is an historical document. And until you actually understand that it's a historical document, the tendency to think that it's a mythology or just made-up stories is very, very strong. 
especially since things that happened billions of years ago on this planet and in other places of this universe are very hard for us to relate to with present the way things are today. So it's interesting how we hear about the different parts of uh, the planet Earth and how they used to belong to the original Vedic culture. Okay, Shumbas or Kankas, the inhabitants of the Kanka province of old Bharata mentioned in the Mahabharata. Yavanas. Yavana was the name of one of the, Maha, of Maha, one of the sons of Maharaj Yayati who was given the part of the world known, at, known as Turkey to rule. Therefore the Turks are Yavanas according to the, or, or, or due to being descendants of Maharaj Yavana. The Yavanas were therefore Chatriyas and later on by giving up the Brahminical culture they became Blecha Yavanas. This is what we call the conch shell of Kali. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing is he's blowing his conch as he drives his train with all these goods on it and calls people, come over here and buy me, come over here and buy me. And distracts us from the Bhagavatam. Okay. Yavanas. <clears throat> Yavana was the name of one of the sons of Maharaj Yayati who was given the part of the world known as Turkey to rule. Therefore the Turks are Yavanas due to being descendants of Maharaj Yavana. The Yavanas were therefore Chatriyas and later on by giving up the Brahminical culture they became Mlecha Yavanas. Descriptions of the Yavanas are in the Mahabharata. A prince called Tuvasu was also known as a Yavana and his country was conquered by Sahadev, one of the Pandavas. The western Yavanas joined with Duryodhana in the battle of Kurukshetra under the pressure of Karna. It was foretold that these Yavanas would conquer India and it proved to be true. Kasa, the inhabitants of the Kasadesha are mentioned in the Mahabharata Dronaparva. Those who have a stunted growth of hair on the upper lip are generally called Kasas. As such, the Kasas are the Mongolians, the Chinese, and others who are so designated. The above-mentioned historical names are different nations of the world. Even those who are constantly engaged in sinful acts are all corrigible to the standard of perfect human beings if they take shelter of the devotees of the Lord. Jesus Christ and Muhammad, two powerful devotees of the Lord, have done tremendous service on behalf of the Lord on the surface of the globe. And from the version of Srila Shukadeva Goswami, it appears that instead of running a godless civilization in the, pre in the present context of the world situation, if the leadership of the world fair affairs is, is entrusted to the devotees of the Lord, for which a worldwide organization under the name and style of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness has already been started, that's a big statement and it shows the, res the level of responsibility that we have to develop this society to the point where we'll be able to accommodate so many people. Then by the grace of the Almighty Lord there can be a thorough change of heart in human beings all over the world because the devotees of the Lord are able authorities to effect such a change by purifying the dust-worn minds of the people in general. The politicians of the world may remain in their respective positions because the pure devotees of the Lord are not interested in political leadership or diplomatic implications. The devotees are interested only in seeing that the people in general are not misguided by political propaganda and in seeing that the valuable, valuable life of a human being is not spoiled in following a type of civilization which is ultimately doomed if the politicians therefore would be guided by the good counsel of the devotees, then certainly there would be a great change in the world situation by the purifying propaganda of the devotees as shown by Lord Chaitanya. As Shukadeva Goswami began one of his prayers with the words Yat Kirtanam, so also Lord Chaitanya recommended that simply by glorification of the Lord's holy name a tremendous change of heart can take place by which the complete under misunderstanding 
between the human nations created by politicians can at once be extinguished. And after the extinction, the the extinction of the fire of misunderstanding, other prophets will follow. The destination is to go back home, back to Godhead, as we have several times discussed in these pages. According to the cult of devotion, generally known as the Vaishnava cult, there is no bar against anyone's advancing in the matter of God-realization. A Vaishnava is powerful enough to turn into Vaishnavas, even the Kiratas, etc., as, men, as above mentioned. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.32, it is said by the Lord that there is no bar to become a devotee of the Lord, even for those who are low-born or for women, Shudras or Vaishyas, and whoever becomes a devotee is eligible to return home back to Godhead. The only qualification is that one takes shelter of a pure devotee of the Lord who has thorough knowledge of the transcendental science of Krishna, the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Anyone from any part of the world who becomes well conversant in the science of Krishna becomes a pure devotee and a spiritual master for the general mass of people and may reclaim them by purification of the heart. Though a person be even the most sinful man, he can at once be purified by systematic contact with the pure, de- pure Vaishnava. A Vaishnava, therefore, can accept a bona fide disciple from any part of the world without any consideration of caste and creed and promote him by regulative principles to the status of a pure Vaishnava who is transcendental to Brahminical culture. The system of caste or Vanashram Dharma is no longer regular even amongst the so-called followers of the system, nor is it now possible to re-establish the so-called followers of the system. Nor, it is now possi- nor is it now possible to re-establish the institutional function in the present context of social, political, and economic revolution. Without any, in- without any reference to the particular custom of country, one can be accepted into the Vaishnava cult spiritually and there is no hindrance in the transcendental process. So by the order of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the cult of Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita can be preached all over the world, reclaiming all persons willing to accept the transcendental cult. Such cultural propaganda by the devotees will certainly certainly be accepted by all persons who are reasonable and inquisitive, without any particular bias for the custom of the country. The Vaishnava never accepts another Vaishnava on the basis of birthright, just as he never thinks of the deity of the Lord in a temple as an idol. And to remove all doubts in this connection, Srila Shukadeva Goswami has invoked the blessings of the Lord, who is all-powerful, Prabhavishnave Namaha. Just as stone, wood, or metal is transcendentally changed when the all powerful Lord, in his form as the worshipable deity in the temple, accepts the humble service of his devotees in the devotional activities of Archana, so the body of a pure Vaishnava at once changes transcendentally when he gives himself up to the service of the Lord and is trained by a qualified Vaishnava. The injunction of the Vaishnava regulations in this connection run as follows. Arche Vishnau, Shila Dir, Gurushu Naramatir, Vaishnava Jati Budhi, Shri Vishnur Namni, Mantre, Shabda Samanya Budhi, etc. One should not consider the deity of the Lord as worshipped in the temple to be an idol, nor should one consider the authorized spiritual master an ordinary man nor should one consider a pure Vaishnava to belong to a particular caste, nor should one consider the Hare Krishna Mahamantra a material sound vibration, etc. Padma Purana. The conclusion is that the Lord, being all-powerful, can, under any and every circumstance, accept anyone from any part of the world, either personally or through his bona fide manifestation as the spiritual master. Lord Chaitanya accepted many devotees from communities 
other than the Varnashramites. And he himself declared to teach us that he does not belong to any caste or social order of life, but that he is the eternal servant of the servant of the Lord who maintains the damsels of Vrindavan, Lord Krishna. That is the way of self-realization. Text 19. He is the super soul and the supreme lord of all self-realized souls. He is the personification of the Vedas, religious scriptures, and austerities. He is worshipped by Lord Brahma and Shiva and all those who are transcendental to all pretensions. Being so revered with awe and veneration, may that supreme absolute be pleased with me. Purport. The Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, although the Lord of all followers of different paths of self-realization, is knowable only by those who are above all pretensions. Everyone is searching for eternal peace or eternal life, and with the aim of this destination, everyone is either studying the Vedic scriptures or other religious scriptures, or undergoing severe austerity as empiric philosophers, as mystic yogis, or as unalloyed devotees, etc. But the Supreme Lord is perfectly realized only by the devotees, because they are above all pretensions. Those who are on the path of self-realization are generally classified as karmis, jnanis, yogis, or devotees of the Lord. The karmis who are much attracted by the fruitive activities of the Vedic rituals are called bhuktikamis, or those who desire material enjoyment. The jnanis, who try to become one with the Supreme by mental speculation, are called muktikamis, or those who desire liberation from material existence. The mystic yogis, who practice different types of austerities for attainment of eight kinds of mystic perfection and who ultimately meet the super-soul, Paramatma, in trance are called Siddhikamis or those who desire the perfection of becoming finer than the finest, becoming heavier than the heaviest, getting everything desired, having control over everyone, creating everything liked, etc. All these are ab abilities of a powerful yogi. But the devotees of the Lord do not want anything like that for self-satisfaction. They only want to serve the Lord because the Lord is great and as living entities they are eternally subordinate parts and parcels of the Lord. This perfect realization of the self by the devotee helps him to become desireless, to desire nothing for his personal self and thus the devotees are called nishkami, without any desire. A living entity, by his constitutional position, cannot be devoid of all desires. The bhuktikamis, muktikamis, and siddhikamis all desire something for personal satisfaction. But the nishkami devotees of the Lord desire everything for the satisfaction of the Lord. They are completely dependent on the orders of the Lord and are always ready to discharge their duty for the satisfaction of the Lord. In the beginning, Arjuna placed himself as one of those who desire self-satisfaction, for he desired not to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra, but to make him desireless, the Lord preached the Bhagavad Gita, in which the ways of Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Hatha Yoga, and also Bhakti Yoga were explained. Because Arjuna was without any pretension, he changed his decision and satisfied the Lord by agreeing to fight Krishe Vachanam Tava. And thus he became desireless. The examples of Brahma and Lord Shiva are specifically cited here because Brahmaji, Lord Shiva, Srimati Lakshmiji, and the four Kumaras, Sanaka, Sanatana, etc., are leaders of the four desireless Vaishnava Sampradayas. They are all freed from all pretensions. 
Srila Jiva Goswami interprets the word gata jali kahai as prochita kaitavai, or those who are freed from all pretensions, the unalloyed devotees only. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya 19, 149, it is said, Krishna Bhakta Nishkam Atayeva Shanta Bhukti Mukti Siddhikami Sakali Ashanta. Those who are after fruitive results for their pious activities, those who desire salvation and identi an identity with the Supreme, and those who desire material perfections of mystic power are all restless because they want something for themselves. But the devotee is perfectly peaceful because he has no demand for himself and he is always ready to serve the desire of the Lord. The conclusion is, therefore, that the Lord is for everyone because no one can achieve the result of his respective desires without his sanction. But as stated by the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita 8.9, all such results are rewarded by him only, are awarded by him only. For the Lord is Adishwara, the original controller of everyone, namely the Vedantists, the great Karmakandiyas, the great religious leaders, the great performers of austerity, and all those who are striving for spiritual advancement. But ultimately, he is realized by the pretensionless devotees only. Therefore, special stress is given to the devotional service of the Lord by Srila Sugadeva Goswami. Text 20. Shriyak Patir Yagya Pati Praja Patir Diyam Patir Loka Patir Dara Pati Patir Gatish Chandagavishni Satvatam Prasidatam Me Bhagavan Satam Patihi May Lord Sri Krishna, who is the worshipable Lord of all the devotees, the protector and glory of all the kings like Andaka and Vrishni of the Yadu dynasty, the husband of all goddesses of fortune, the director of all sacrifices, and therefore the leaders of all living the leader of all living entities, the controller of all intelligence, the proprietor of all planets, spiritual and material, and the supreme incarnation on the earth, the supreme all in all, be merciful upon me. Purport. Since Sugadeva Goswami is one of the prominent Gata Vilikas, those who are freed from all misconceptions, he therefore expresses his own realized perceptions of Lord Sri Krishna as being the sum total of all perfection, the personality of Godhead. Everyone is seeking the favor of the goddess of fortune, but people do not know that Lord Sri Krishna is the beloved husband of the goddess of fortune. In the Brahma Sangita, it is said that the Lord in his transcendental abode, Goloka Vrindavan, is accustomed to herding the Serbi cows and is served there by hundreds of thousands of goddesses of fortune. All these goddesses of fortune are manifestations of his transcendental pleasure potency, Ladini Shakti, in his internal energy. And when the Lord manifested himself on the earth, this earth, he partially displayed the activities of his pleasure potency in his Rasa Lila just to attract the conditioned <coughs> souls who were all after the phantasmagoria, pleasure potency, in degraded sex enjoyment. The pure devotees of the Lord, like Shukadeva Goswami, who was completely detached from the abominable sex life of the material world, discussed this act of the Lord's pleasure potency Certainly, certainly not in relation, in relation to sex, but to relish a transcendental taste inconceivable to the mundaners who are after sex life. Sex life in the mundane world is the root cause of being conditioned by the shackles of illusion. And certainly, Shukadeva Goswami was never interested in the sex life of the mundane world. Nor does the manifestation of the Lord's pleasure potency have any connection with such degraded things. Lord Chaitanya was a strict sannyasi, 
so much so that he did not allow any woman to come near him, not even to bow down and offer respect. He never even heard the prayers of the Devi Dasis offered in the temple of Jagannath because the sannyasi is forbidden to hear songs sung by the fair sex. Yet even in the rigid position of a sannyasi, he recommended the mode of worship preferred by the gopis of Vrindavan as the topmost loving service possible to be rendered to the Lord. And Srimati Radharani is the principal head of all such goddesses of fortune, and therefore she is the pleasure counterpart of the Lord and is non different from Krishna. In the Vedic rituals, there are recommendations for performing different types of sacrifice in order to achieve the greatest benefit in life. The benedictions that result from performing great sacrifices are, after all, favors given by the goddess of fortune. And the Lord, being the husband or lover of the goddess of fortune, is factually the Lord of all sacrifices also. <clears throat> he is the final enjoyer of all kinds of yagya. Therefore, Yagyapati is another name of Lord Vishnu. It is recommended in the Bhagavad Gita that everything be done for the Yagyapati, Yagyartat Karmana, because otherwise one's acts will be the cause of conditioning by the laws of material nature. Those who are not freed from all misconceptions, Bhyalikam, perform sacrifices to please the minor demigods, but the devotees of the Lord know very well that Lord Sri Krishna is the supreme enjoyer of all performances of sacrifice. Therefore, they perform the Sankirtana Yagya, Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, which is especially recommended in this age of Kali. In Kali Yuga, performance of other types of sacrifice is not feasible due to insufficient arrangements and inexpert priesthood. We have information from the Bhagavad Gita 3.10-11 through 11, that Lord Brahma, after giving rebirth to the conditioned souls within the universe, instructed them to perform sacrifices and to lead a prosperous life. With such sacrificial performances, <clears throat> the conditioned souls will never be in difficulty in keeping body and soul together. Ultimately, they can purify their existence. They will find natural promotion into spiritual existence, the real identity of the living being. Under no circumstances should a conditioned soul ever give up the practice of sacrifice, charity, and austerity. The aim of all such sacrifices is to please the Yagyapati, the personality of Godhead. Therefore the Lord is also Prajapati. According to the Kata Upanishad, the one Lord is the leader and maintainer of the innumerable living entities, Eko, Bahunam, Yo, Vididapikaman. The Lord is therefore called the Supreme Bhutta Brit, or maintainer of all living beings. Living beings are proportionately endowed with intelligence in terms of their previous activities. All living beings are not equally endowed with the same quality of intelligence because behind such development of intelligence is the control of the Lord as declared in the Bhagavad Gita 1515. As Paramatma, the super soul, the Lord is living in everyone's heart and from Him only does one's power of remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness follow. Matakshmitir, jnanam, apoanam, cha. One person can sharply remember past activities by the grace of the Lord, our Gita Swami. Isn't it? Yeah. Why can't we all remember like that? Ah. One person can sharply remember past activities by the grace of the Lord, while others cannot. One person is highly intelligent by the grace of the Lord, and another is a fool by the same control. Therefore the Lord is Dhyampati, or the Lord of Intelligence. The conditioned souls strive to become lords of the material world. Everyone is trying to lord it over the material nature by applying his highest degree of intelligence. One's full intelligence 
should be applied to get free from the material clutches. But the conditioned soul, due to madness only, engages his full energy and intelligence and sense gratification. And to achieve this end of life, he willfully commits all sorts of misdeeds. The result is that instead of attaining an unconditional life of full freedom, the mad conditioned soul is entangled again and again in different types of bondage in material bodies. Everything we see in the material manifestation is but the creation of the Lord. Therefore, he is the real proprietor of everything in the universes. The conditioned soul can enjoy a fragment of this material creation under the control of the Lord, but not self-sufficiently. That is the instruction in the Ishopanishad. One should be satisfied with things awarded by the Lord of the universe. It is out of madness only that one tries to encroach upon another share of material possessions. The Lord of the universe, out of his causeless mercy upon the conditioned souls, descends by his own energy, Atmamaya, to re-establish the eternal relation of the conditioned souls with him. He, inst he instructs all to surrender unto him instead of falsely claiming to be enjoyers for a certain limit under his control. When he so descends, he proves how much greater is his ability to enjoy and he exhibits his power of enjoyment by, for instance, marrying 16,000 wives at once. The conditioned soul is very proud of becoming the husband of even one wife, but the Lord laughs at this. The intelligent man can know who is the real husband. Factually, the Lord is the husband of all the women in his creation, but a conditioned soul under the control of the Lord feels proud to be the husband of one or two wives. All these qualifications of the different types of pati mentioned in this verse are meant for Lord Sri Krishna. Are meant for who? Lord Just testing. See if you're still here, if you're not somewhere else with your eyes open. The members of the Yadudinasi know that Lord Sri Krishna is everything. And all of them intended to return to Lord Krishna after he had finished his transcendental pastimes on earth. The Yadu dynasty was annihilated by the will of the Lord because its members had to return home with the Lord. The annihilation of the Yadu dynasty was a material show created by the Supreme Lord. Otherwise, the Lord and the members of the uh, Yadu dynasty are all eternal associates. The Lord is therefore the guide of all devotees. And as such, Shukadeva Goswami offered him due respects with love-laden feelings. Text 21. It is the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, who gives liberation. By thinking of his lotus feet at every second, following in the footsteps of authorities, the devotee in trance can see the absolute truth. The learned mental speculators, however, think of him according to their whims. May the Lord be pleased with me. Purport. The mystic yogis, after a strenuous endeavor to control the senses, may be situated in a trance of yoga just to have a vision of the Supersoul within everyone. But the pure devotee, simply by remembering the Lord's lotus feet at every second, at once becomes established in real trance, because by such realization, his mind and intelligence are completely cleansed of the diseases of material enjoyment. The pure devotee thinks himself fallen into the ocean of birth and death, and incessantly prays to the Lord to lift him up, he only aspires to become a speck of transcendental dust at the lotus feet of the Lord. The pure devotees, by the grace of the Lord, absolutely loses all attraction for material enjoyment. And to keep free from contamination, he always thinks of the lotus feet of the Lord. K. 
King Kula Shekhar, a great devotee of the Lord, prayed, Krishna Tudiya Padapanka Chapanchadantam Ajayva me vishatu manasa raja hamsaha prana prayana samaye kapadvata pitai kantava roda navidao smaranam kutas te. My Lord Krishna, I pray that the swan of my mind may immediately sink down to the stems of the lotus feet of your Lordship and be locked in their network. Otherwise, at the time of my final breath, when my throat is choked up with cough, how will, be, how will it be possible to think of you? Mukunda Malastotra, 33. <clears throat> there is an intimate relationship between the swan and the lotus stem. So the comparison is very appropriate. Without becoming a swan or paramahamsa, one cannot enter into the network stems of the lotus feet of the Lord. As stated in the Brahma Sanghita, the mental speculators, even after dint of learned scholarship, even by dint of learned scholarship, cannot even dream of the absolute truth by speculating over it for eternity. The Lord reserves the right of not being exposed to such mental speculators. And because they cannot enter into the networked stems of the lotus feet of the Lord, all mental speculators differ in their conclusions. And at the end, they make a useless compromise by saying, as many conclusions, as many ways. According to one's own inclination, yata rucham. But the Lord is not like a shopkeeper trying to please all sorts of customers in the mental speculator exchange. The Lord is what He is, the absolute personality of Godhead, and He demands absolute surrender unto Him only. The pure devotee, however, by following the ways of the previous acharyas or authorities, can see the Supreme Lord through the transparent medium of a bona fide spiritual master, Anupashanti. The pure devotee never tries to see the Lord by mental speculation, but he sees him by following in the footsteps of the acharyas, Mahajano, Yenikata, Sapanta. Therefore, there is no difference of conclusions amongst the Vaishnava acharyas regarding the Lord and the devotees. Lord Chaitanya asserts that the living entity, Jiva, is eternally the servitor of the Lord and that he is simultaneously one with and different from the Lord. This tattva of Lord Chaitanya's is shared by all four sampradayas of the Vaishnava school, all accepting eternal servitude to the Lord, even after salvation. And there is no authorized Vaishnava Acharya who may think of the Lord and himself as one. This humbleness of the pure devotee who is 100% engaged in his service, puts the devotee of the Lord in a trance by which to realize everything. Because to the sincere devotee of the Lord, the Lord reveals himself, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita 10.10. The Lord being the Lord of intelligence in everyone, even in the non-devotee, favors his devotee with proper intelligence, so that automatically the pure devotee is enlightened with the factual truth about the Lord and His different energies. The Lord is revealed not by one's speculative power or by one's verbal jugglery over the absolute truth. Rather, He reveals Himself to a devotee when He is fully satisfied by the Lord's service attitude. Shukadeva Goswami is not a mental speculator or compromiser following the theory of as many conclusions as many ways. Rather, he prays to the Lord only, invoking his transcendental pleasure. That is the way of knowing the Lord. Hare Krishna. So we'll stop our reading tonight and uh, ask for reflections from anybody. Any point that stuck in your mind, if you can remember, still after all the partying we've been doing for the last two weeks. <laughs> Yes, Hannah. Why are women always grouped with loved ones? 
Because in, in a general sense, they're generally not inclined to philosophical approach to life. In a general sense. But if a woman becomes a Vaishnava, then she becomes elevated and out of that category. Therefore, in that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, the very important verse, Mami Partha Vipasritu, Yepisu Papa Yoniya, Striya, which means women, Vaisha, means Vaishas, Tata Shudras, Tepi Antipadam Gatim, can attain the supreme destination. So it's better, although there's a lot of statements in Prabhupada's books that make that claim, to focus on that last line of that verse, that no matter who you are, you can attain the supreme de destination. So it really doesn't make any difference what body you're in, or what even the Vedas think of you. I just wondered why, like, is there like some, is there like that some qualification that, that isn't like, isn't it's like every human being on the earth in the Kali Yuga is born a Shudra. So Striya Vaishya Sato Shudras means everyone in the material world right now in the, in the Kali Yuga, or at least on the earth. But because we're, we're, we're conditioned to, to the external differences, uh, we may focus on one category and think that the other categories are superior. But it's not like that. This is in relationship to the inclination to search for the truth. That's, the, that's what it's categorized as. So the Shudras aren't generally so inclined to search for the truth. And therefore, all over the world, you'll find very few people now on the earth, relatively speaking, who are search for the truth. But when Lord Chaitanya comes, he breaks down that barrier. And he gives pure love of God to anyone and everyone without considering whether they're qualified or not. And all one has to do is accept it. Didn't he leave that beginning and let women bow down there? Yes, but that does, that's not, a, that's not a, a sign of uh, discrimination against women. It's to, give a, it's to give a lesson to show that the general tendency in this material world is for the male and the female to be attracted to one another. It's, it's, it's an example for others. But what did he preach? He preached that the gopis' service to Krishna was the highest. And he was always absorbed in the mood of, the, of them and their service. So, if we understand these laws and these ways that the material nature is working, the laws of nature, they're meant simply to make the atmosphere in the world more conducive towards thinking about God. That's all. And because the general tendency is for women to always look up to men and men to always look up to women. You don't have to look very far to figure that one out. You know? Therefore, these... Uh, this organization of human society, based on those principles, is recommended for those who are interested in coming out of that conditioning. Thanks. And over and above that, they're called the fair sex. Why? First of all, they're more beautiful. Second, second of all, <laughs> They're weaker. <clears throat> you know, I, I saw, you know, I used to be follow sports. I don't anymore, but I used to follow sports. And they didn't have a WNBA in those days when I was following sports, but they do now. And somehow, rather, when I was going to a news site, I saw this big ha banner headline. One of, the, one of the ladies in the WNBA had, had dunked the ball, I means over the rim, dunk. You know what dunk is? Yeah, mm -hmm. one, and then it was like a big deal. But every practically everybody in the NBA in the, in the NBA can dunk. In every golf course in the world, there's two tees, and the women's tee is closer to the hole than the others. In every athletic event, the record, everyone without exception, 
directed for how fast or how high or how far or whatever they do as the, as the goal. Uh, the, the records for the women are always lower because they're not as strong physically. They're not meant to be. If they were, what a whole horrible world it would be. Excuse me? Is it the same mentally? Not as strong mentally? Yes. Anyway, that, that's also relative. It's also relative. There are women who are men, more intelligent than men, obviously. And there are men who are you know, more intelligent than women, obviously. But in a general sense, if you examine, and I know that there's propaganda against this, and you know now in the Kali Yuga, the men are getting weaker and weaker, and the women are getting stronger and stronger. You can see it, even the social movements, what is going on now. Yeah, it is, it is, and it's. But there's reasons for it, because the men are exploiting the weakness of the women, you know, and, exp and, and abusing them, and the women are finally beginning to stand up as a group, as a whole, and say, "Not me too," you know. <laughs> oh, by the way, and me too, and me, you know. And so it's all becoming, you know, uh, brought out into the surface now. And it's causing, causing chaos. And it's not the women's fault, it's the men's fault. So you shouldn't think that these statements in the Vedas that describe that condition or that division of, of living beings uh, is meant to discriminate. No, it's meant to give the right uh, responsibility to the different sections of human society to protect, not to exploit. Balam balabatam chaham, kama raga vibhajita. That bala balabatam chaham means it is the weak's, it is the strong's duty to protect the weak. In the Bible, it says that man is 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 created with the ability to have dominion over the animals. That doesn't mean that he can kill them and eat them. It means that they should protect them. Okay. What else? Yes, sir. Well, we was talking about the theory or many ways of the conclusion. It means yatapat matapat. It's a philosophy that, it, that was uh, propounded by a certain Mayavadi, not just a certain, all the Mayavadis, but one who said it kind of eloquently, yatapat matapat, means whatever way is as good as any other way. You know, there are so-called great spiritual authorities that aren't really great spiritual authorities, but are being propagated as such in India who say that you can uh, worship uh, Kali and become God by worshiping Kali or any other uh, you know, personality that you read about in the scriptures. But it never says that in the scriptures, never. So this is the impersonalist way of breaking down the order Demoniac persons, it's their, you know, everybody gets a thrill out of doing something. And demoniac persons get a thrill out of turning order in, in, in upside down. Hirani Kashipu did that. All the great demons, they do that. Imagine Kangsa. He's tried every way to kill Krishna. He's arranged for there to be a great sacrifice. A wrestling match, and he set up grandstands. It's kind of like the big, you know, uh, maybe not as, maybe as large. I don't know how large it was, but the big stadiums, the sports stadiums, the footballers, and you know, thousands of people come and watch the, the gladiators fight it out. So there's Kangsa. He's on his dais and he's arranged this whole thing, and Krishna comes in with his brother carrying on their shoulders the tusks of the largest elephant in the world that they just killed handily, right? And they come in front of him and they put the trunks, the, the tusks, in the ground 
right in front of his dais and look at him. And then go over and proceed to beat the you-know-what out of the most powerful wrestlers of that time in that area. And when, when Kongsa finally sees, game's up, game's over, he stands up and he starts yelling, arrest him, arrest Nanda Maharaj, arrest my father, kill them all, send them away, you know? He's like, he's gone, he's deranged, you know? <coughs> so when you put a <coughs> demon in a corner and you expose him for what he is, you know, he just will say anything and he'll do anything, you know, to maintain his own power, his own matapat, yatapat, whatever. He'll do anything. Yes. I found it uh, interesting when I got back here and kind of meditating on this point a little bit recently. Hmm. Um, that the most important thing in Krishna consciousness is your consciousness. That you can externally be doing, um, like appearing as a totally mundane activity. But if your consciousness is, I'm doing this to please Krishna, you know, and to work in the service, then um, it becomes transcendental. So, in the purport, it says, um, the Lord is not revealed by one's speculative power or by one's verbal chuckery over the absolute truth. Rather, he reveals himself to the devotee when he is fully satisfied by the devotee's service attitude, which is the verse from Bhagavad Gita. Um, so, I found it interesting that it's the devotee's service attitude, not necessarily the devotee's service, but it's the attitude of the service. Yeah, but you can't disconnect the attitude yeah, of so service yeah, to yeah. service. Yeah. You can't say, I've got a great service I'm attitude. Great Don't give me any service. <laughs> but, but I've got a great service attitude. Yeah. But it says right here in the scripture, it's only by the attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mind the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I've been meditating on that quite a lot recently that... Um, the most important thing is the attitude of the service. It's interconnected. Exactly. So you can't not do service and think that it's okay to have a service attitude and not do service. If you have a service <laughs> attitude, then you'll do service. Yeah. But the point that you made in the beginning is the real point, mm -hmm. that something may be, someone may be doing something that may externally appear to be a mundane activity. You know, they're digging a post hole to build you know, a skyscraper building for a bank. And another person may be building a post hole to, do, be, to, do, to build a temple of the Lord. And in his consciousness, he's thinking, you know, what he's doing is for the service of the Lord. That's what it means, that it's the service attitude, not the service. It means he may be doing the same thing. but in one Or a devotee may be out there doing sankirtan and thinking, oh, look at her, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's a chance, you know. Or... <laughs> You know, if I if I do you know really big, then when I get home, you know, I may get the maha plate, or you know, I may you know be able to stand up and get the you know the appreciation and applause of the devotees, or who knows, maybe I can become a sankirtan leader and lord it over everybody else, and so on and so on and so forth. And they can't and they don't do sankirtan for very long, so it's the service attitude, it's the attitude of doing service for the pleasure of Krishna. And that's why it says in that very sentence, when the Lord is pleased, when the Lord sees that that service attitude is fixed, that whatever he gives them to do, he'll do it for the pleasure of the Lord and not for the pleasure of himself, not to take anything for himself, but to use everything he gains from service in the service of the Lord. So that's the service attitude. For the pleasure of the Lord. And, and because if you do that for long enough and pure enough, the Lord's heart melts. And He wants to serve that person. And therefore we become successful. Not for any other reason. Because without His sanction we can't do anything. We can't get up in the morning. So if we have that service attitude, oh Lord, get me up tomorrow morning, please, please get me up, get me up, because I'm eager to serve, then we get up. 
I mean, I haven't used an alarm clock in 35 years. Anyway. So that's the point. That's what it means when, when, when the, the uh, purports were talking about the, how the devotee lives in trance by thinking constantly of the Lord favorably, not like Kangsa, thinking every second of the Lord, when, I'm, when, I'm, when is he going to come? I'm going to kill him as soon as he gets here. You know, I mean, let's make a plan and let's send this one and that one and the other one and let's do this, let's do that, all thinking of Krishna constantly. So he's Krishna conscious. I mean, Narada Muni prays to the, the Krishna consciousness of demons, you know, out of humility, out of his own humility, thinking, I wish I could think of Krishna that intensely. But it doesn't mean that we should think of Krishna like that <laughs> intensely. <laughs> so that service attitude also has something more to do than just what I'm thinking. Well, there, 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 there is a, uh, a class of uh, so-called devotee who actually worship the form of Krishna. It goes to his point. They may be looking at the deity and waving, you know, the uh, flame, and you know, doing everything just like a Pukka Brahman will do in a, in a Vishnu temple. But he's thinking that he wants to merge into Krishna and become Krishna. It's another example of what you're talking about. It's not the ex, not the external uh, act. It's the attitude, the service attitude. So if you want to become one with Krishna or you want to become Krishna, that's out of envy. And even Srila Prabhupada, as he also described in these purports when he was talking about bhukti uh, kami, uh, mukti kami, bhukti kami, siddhi kami, these are persons who have desires for something for themselves. Bhukti kami, they want something. They want some comfort. They want some position. They want some authority. They want some adoration. They want some distinction. They want some profit for themselves. And the Mukti kami wants liberation so that he, why? So that he can become free from this, you know, uncomfortable situation in the material world so I'll feel better. The Siddhi Kami wants power, wants mystic perfection, so that they can lord it over in more subtle ways. So they're all full of desires. Even the persons that are worshipping the deity with that intention to want to uh, merge into the Lord and lose their own personal identity. It's called spiritual suicide. That's their desire, spiritual suicide, because they're afraid of being persons again in the next life. They're afraid that liberation might mean that I can maintain a, a, an individual personal identity when in fact all I'm doing here is moment to moment suffering in one way or another. No thanks. I don't want that anymore. So just cancel it out and become a voidist. But if the, if the desire is to please the senses of the Lord, then the Lord knows that. He's there in your heart. He knows. He can't. You know, you can, you can kind of obfuscate the law in this world, at least for some time, but you can't avoid the law of the Lord for a second because He's right there watching you at every moment. He knows every single thing you're thinking, every single thing you desire. Therefore, it says that a person who is free from pretension can get the favor of the Lord. As long as you have pretension, as long as you're looking for something else, what is the verse in the Gita? Karmendriyani samyamya yaaste manasa smaran indriyartan vimudatma so here's the verse where Krishna is describing what a pretender is. 
Karmindrani Samyamya. He's acting externally like he's renounced. Karmindriyani Samyamya. Yaaste Manasa Smaran. But in his mind, he's always remembering sense gratification and he's looking for it. Indriyartam Vimudatma. Vimudatma is a special word in this verse. It means self deluded. Not just deluded, he's deluding himself by this thinking, by the way he's thinking. Mitya charsa ujjde, such a person is called the pretender. So if you've got one thing going outside and the other thing going on the inside, Krishna's inside watching <laughs> and he knows what's going on. Because you can't make a step forward in spiritual life, in reality. You make it a position by imp you know, Im impressing everybody by doing something outstanding. So therefore, Krishna usually, not always, but usually, takes everything away from the devotee, the sincere devotee, the one who's actually sincere. Completely takes everything away, like Prabhupada, for nine years he's living in Vrindavan without barely one cloth. His God brothers finally see how powerful he is in terms of you know, his literary skills, and they wanted him to come and you know, manage their you know, ma publication or something. And he, he writes back, I will, but you'll have to give me one dhoti. Yeah. <laughs> I can't go into Delhi and live in the temple unless you give me one dhoti. Okay, I'm getting up early in the morning and recording Chaitanya Charitamrita for the BBT, so I'm it's got to stop now. As much as I would like to go on and get the Sangha, more of the Sangha of all of you. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you very much everyone out there in cyberspace. Please keep coming, keep hearing, keep sharing. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Sri Parikshit Maharaj Ki Jai. Shri Goswami Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi. Hare